I think uh, the scale of the infrastructure deficit in Africa is so staggering. And, and China's involvement on the continent actually coincides with a retrenchment of traditional partners from hard infrastructure. So traditional partners began to focus on social issues, health, education, and spend less money on hard infrastructure. And the relative uh, size of African economy is normally small and the inability to raise money from the domestic economy to finance infrastructure, China is filling a massive gap. At this point in Africa's history, of all of our partners, China seems to be the only one with both the resources and the appetite to finance heavy infrastructure in Africa. So that's, that's been an incredible opportunity for the, for the continent. The second thing is that it's giving African um, policymakers a choice. Right, initially, you went to Brussels or you went to Washington to be able to get anything financed on the continent. Now, Beijing provides an opportunity, and if we have three choices, then by playing one against the other, we might be able to get the best deal. And so that's one of the dynamics of China's uh, on the continent. However, the relationship also has its drawbacks. Right? In most African countries, the governance structure in, of, of public finance is still weak, and, and the relative speed at which Chinese deals are um, negotiated and the relative lack of transparency on the terms of those deals has sometimes been um, a negative in terms of the relationship. So that is a portion of the relationship that can be, can be improved, but it provides a great opportunity. China has excess capacity. Um, there are very little manufacturing you're beginning to see on the continent is, is significantly linked to China. So by allowing Africans to actually begin to manufacture, providing the resources and the connections to do that, that is an opportunity that can be exploited.